We're so happy to be here today. We need a friend like Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to ask you to turn off your cell phone, please, and uh, we just disconnect for a while where we can spend this time dedicated to the Lord. Uh, I want to turn to the scripture that was read in our hearing in Job chapter 10, verse 1. Job 10, 1. Job had the audacity to talk to God in his fashion. Job said, my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendeth with me. He want God to show him. You know, you got to be careful sometimes what you ask for. He said, show me when thou contendeth with me. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress that, that thou shouldest despise the work of thy hand and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Has thou eyes of flesh? Job said, are you a man? You don't know what I'm going through, Job. Job telling God, are you a man? Do you have eyes of flesh? See thou as a man? Are the days as the days of man? Are the years as man days? Right. He wants to know. You don't know what you're talking about, God. You don't know what I'm going through. And we know that Job was an upright man. Yes, sir. So today, what I want to talk about is be careful when you ask God questions. When we, when we ask God questions, sometimes a question is not really a question. Sometimes a question is something to get somebody in a trap. You have to be careful of questions. You know, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? What is truth? Did he say, what is truth? Or for it is true. See, it's the same question, but it's asked two different ways. One, one way he's saying, I really want to know what truth is. And the other one's saying, does anybody know what truth really is? See, when you ask a question, sometimes questions have a trick to it, Brother Walton. And you be careful, especially preachers, they get you at the back door to ask you a question. There's a trick to it. You know, people say, well, I want you to pray for such and so and so person because you know, they're not doing well. Let me tell you what's going on. See, they don't want you to really pray for them. They want to gossip about what's going on in somebody's life. So you have to be careful with these questions. So I thought about Job. You know what Job said in Job 38, verse 4? Where, God said to him, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou understand. God said, if you want to ask me some questions, I'm going to ask you some questions. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Who hath laid the measurement, the measures thereof, if thou know it? Who hath stretched the line upon? Whereupon are the fountains thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone? God said, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to just, if you're going to ask God a sincere question, that's good. But if it's got some trickery to it, God has, a, God has an answer for you. So that's what we want to talk about today. When we ask God questions, what are your motives? God wants you to know what you need to know. But are you trying to be sarcastic or are you trying to be sincere? That's the question on the floor today. So when we ask God questions, what if you ask God, where did sin and evil come from? God, you're a good God. God is good all the time. And if God is good all the time and everything he made was good, well, you tell me, preacher, where did sin come from? Either that means God is not good, or either that means God didn't create everything, or it's got to be a problem somewhere with God, preacher. Because the Bible tells me in Acts, in Luke 18 and verse 19, Jesus said unto them, why call you me good? There is none good but one. That's God. So we know God is good. So we're just trying to figure out where did evil come from? God is good and, and there's evil in this world. Lord knows there's some evil in this world. And the Bible says in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God created. We know God created everything. Yes. And they want to know where did evil come from, Brother Paul, because God is good. And when you watch God create things, Genesis 1, 4, God saw the light and he made the light and it was good. And Genesis 1.10, and the waters called, he sees, and God saw it was good. And Genesis 1.14, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it was good. Everything that God created, 
It was good. The Bible says in Genesis 1.16, and he divided the light from the darkness, and God saw it was good. You know what he said in Genesis 1.21? Every winged fowl after his kind, God saw it was good. Didn't pray tell me, preacher, where did evil come from? It's got to be a problem somewhere. And Genesis 127, and God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him male and female, he created them. Right. Well, preacher, when you don't ask the question, preacher, <laughs> where, where did evil come from? In Genesis 2.16, Brother Williams, you know where evil came from? God gave you free will. God gave you the right to do right or to do wrong. He didn't make you do right. right. If he would have made you do right, then you wouldn't have free will. Right. And in Genesis 2, 16, what did he say there, brother? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, uh -huh. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely eat, uh -huh. but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, if God didn't want you to eat of it, why did he put it in the garden? Because God wants you to choose right. But you, God giving you a choice. Right. You know where evil came from? Me. And you. And all of us who made decisions that we shouldn't make. All right, now. Don't lay that on God. Because right. <laughs> they said, well, if, if God is good and God is good all the time and everything God made is good and so a problem with God. No, the problem is not with God. The problem is with us. Because God gave you the right to choose right now. Mm -hmm. Just like your children. You try to raise them the best you can. Amen. You want to send them in the right direction. And some of them still go on. Amen. Amen. You know, I went up to the run a meeting in, in Minnesota and the preacher's mom was so, oh, oh, I love my son. And I knew my son was going to be a preacher day. Mm -hmm. I love my son. And, and I asked my mom, I said, did you know I was going to be a preacher? She said, no. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to be a <laughs> What I'm trying to tell you is we're the ones who make these mistakes, Brother oh, Thomas. Right. We're the ones who brought evil. We're the ones who, but God has given us the right to choose right and wrong. Amen. The Bible says bring up a child, raise a child in the way he should go. And when they get old, he shall not depart from them. But they do because they have a free will. And God wants people to love him for him. Amen. God wants you to choose him. You, you know you have people who love people because they have a little money. Yeah. You got football players and basketball players and rich people, and they don't know if they have a, a good relationship because a lot of people up there only because they have a little money. And what God did for us is give us the right to choose right and give us the right to choose wrong. And so that's how evil came in. It came in because of me. And it came in because of you. And the Bible said in Deuteronomy 11 at verse 26, brother. Deuteronomy 11, 26. What does he say there, brother? Behold, I said before you this day a blessing and a curse. Right. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, uh -huh. which I command you this day. Right. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments. Of All you got to do is obey the commandments. Amen. You'll get the blessing. If you don't, it's a curse. You're going into the, they were going into the land of promise. All they had to do was turn out to the right and turn out to the left. Just do what God told them. Right. That's what God does. God gives us free will. That's where evil comes from. Amen. And you know some people just not going to do right no matter what you say. Amen. No matter what you do, they're going to, there's some nasty, low down, yes. snake in the grass, yes. despicable people. Yes. <laughs> Who are just going to do wrong every time. And that's where evil comes from. And brother, wait, in Matthew 7, 13. Matthew 7, 13. What does he say there, brother? Enter ye in at the straight gate. Uh-huh. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Right. And many there be which go in therein. Uh-huh. So all you have to do is keep going, brother. Because straight is the gate, uh -huh. and narrow is the way which leadeth unto light, and few be there that find. Which gate are you going to enter in? Are you going to go in the broad way, or are you going to go in the narrow way? 
The narrow way people are trying to do what God says to do and live right the broad way. Everybody does whatever they want to do. It's your choice. What I'm trying to tell you is that when you ask this question, you got to realize that God is not the proponent of evil. Right. God gave us the free will to choose. But you got to ask it sincerely. What if you ask another question? What if you ask, how long will the good suffer, God? You see people suffering, good people, going through rheumatoid arthritis, going through cancer, going through AIDS, going through COVID, going through all of these diseases. God, how long are we going to have to suffer going through these things, going through despicable people who want to try to get over on you, do you wrong, and do you? God, how long we got to put up with these folks? <laughs> And the Bible said, in, and Proverbs, I'm, I'm sorry, Psalms 35, verse 17, the same sentiment. How, Lord, how long will thou look on me and rescue me and rescue my soul from their destructions, my darlings from the lions? The same sentiment, brother with you, and, and Psalms 94, verse 3, Psalms 94, 3, what does he say there, brother? Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? Mm -hmm. How long shall they utter and speak hard things? Mm -hmm. yes. And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. How long, God, we got to go through this? Mm -hmm. You know, some bad people out there, right? Yes, yes. yes. But do you know one time you used to be one of them? Oh. <laughs> And you know, one time I used to be one of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God gave us a chance. Yes, so we ought to be happy that God has given them a chance. Yes, Instead of looking at it that, you know, yeah, we don't want to go through it, but God, thank you for giving them a little chance just the same way you gave me. Yes, when you ask a question, you got to be sincere about it. Yes, you don't go throwing questions in God's face unless you're sincere about it. Amen. And that was the question they kept asking. Habakkuk said the same thing. How long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto the violence and thou wilt not say Habakkuk, I want to know what's going on, God. That's what we're telling God, right? God, you're not on your job. God, you're not doing the way you should be doing. If you were, we wouldn't be going through this, God. You know, the guy called me. He want to know what happens to people who can't mentally Understand about hey, I, that's not my job. Yeah, right. Right. Hey, I'm dealing with you. I'm dealing with the one who can understand. Yeah. And God will deal with the other ones. Because sometimes people think if they can get it, but somebody else can get away with something, they can get away with right. something. No, God knows what you're thinking, <laughs> what you're scheming. Right. Somebody said, well, you know, preach a, a little bit of alcohol. Is, that ain't bad for you preaching. And after all, we had meds. You know, these meds we take today, they make you loopy. Well, why are you taking the meds? Are you taking them to get high? Or are you taking them because of your... God knows your motive. You see, we think we can get over on God. We think, yeah, we can play this game. No, God knows why you're doing what you're doing. And I'm trying to say that we have to realize that we're going through some things, we're suffering through some things, but and we're dealing with evil people. But one time we used to be those people. Yeah. All right. And God gave us an opportunity. Right. And we ought to be happy that other people. Because God works on his own timetable. And Gal Galatia 4 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. God sent his son, he who was ready to send his son. Amen. It was in the fullness of of time. It's God's timetable, not ours. It said in Ephesians 1 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that you might gather together in one all things in Christ, both who are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. God is the one that has the timetable, is going to do it when he wants to do it. In Acts 17 and verse 31, because he has a point in the day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. You know, God has a thing on the calendar. Mm -hmm. And he's coming. He's going he's gonna to judge us. That's why we need to get it right now. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't keep playing around. You need to come down this aisle and give me your hand and give Christ your heart. Stop playing games with God. 
But God, I just, I just, no, you understand what you need to do. The, the date is on the calendar. You ever circle a date? And you're looking forward to that date. And you get there, and you're going to deal with whatever happens on that day. Well, God has a date where he's going to judge the world. Yeah. I don't know when Jesus is coming back, yes. but I know he's coming. Yeah. Like he said it was. Well, <laughs> he's coming back. So in Psalms 121, verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. All I know is there's some suffering, but I know who's going to help me. God is going to help me. You are all going to go through some ups and downs. In this life, there's going to be some trouble. And if you haven't, if you haven't had any yet, you just keep living. It's coming. We're dealing with a young lady now who's lost her father. We're going to pray for her, but that's the way life is. It's going to be some trouble in this yeah. life. We have death in this Williams family. We have death in that Williams family. Yeah. Death is coming. Yes, but we can't leave God. Amen. We got to realize our help. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which my help comes. Amen. God can help you. God can help me. God can help all, us all. Amen. But suffering is just a part of life. That's why Peter said in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slight concerning his promises, as some men count slightness, but is long-suffering to us. That's what's going on. God's being long-suffering. God's, God's waiting and wanting everybody to repent. God's trying to give everybody a little time. Just like he gave us time, he's trying to give somebody else time. So don't be so down on other people. You just do what you need to do, and God will do what he needs to do, and we'll all get the way we're supposed to get to. Amen. But you got to love God. you got to love him with all your heart. Amen. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but is long-suffering to us, were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. I don't know how I messed that up. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and his work shall therein shall be burned up. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming like a thief in the night. He's coming. Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that you need to be ready now. Yeah. Why do we go through this? Why do we read the Bible? Why do we preach the Bible? They give you a chance. All right. They give you an opportunity to obey the gospel. If you would hear his word and believe what he says, repent and confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You'll be baptized and God will wash away all of your sins. Amen. You ever had dirty clothes? Mm -hmm. And you put that, you put that tide in there, or cheer, or whatever you use. I'm not, this is not an advertisement, but you put that dish detergent in there, and all, you, all the dirt is washed away. That's the way God is with us. Brother Whitney, in Mark 13, 32. Mark 13, 32. What does he say there? But of that day, and that hour, the Lord's domain, uh -huh. know not the angels which are in heaven, right. neither the Son, but the Father. The only person that knows when the end of the world is coming is the Father. Yeah. Not even the Son, not even angels, mm -hmm. only God. Right. And you, you look <laughs> on television and you look online, people have been predicting the end of the world for well. They say, well, two, it was supposed to be 2,000 when, uh, when this, this millennium came in, this, this, this year came in, I mean, 2,000 was coming in, everything was supposed to fall apart. The banks were supposed to close down, the end of the world was coming. Yeah. You look online, people have been predicting the end of the world forever. And the only person that knows that is God. Amen. When one person Amen. said that that's when it's coming, Amen. I know that's not when it's coming. <laughs> Because I know God is the only one that knows. Amen. How long will we suffer? We're going to go through some things. You know what? Suffering is kind of good for us because it makes us realize we need God. Yeah. When we go through some things, you you realize you need God. I was I was in my office and and somebody, I was listening to something and I, and I said to myself, I said it out loud. I said, that's so plain. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, well, a lot of people don't see it plain. Amen. But it is plain. All you got to do is read it. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Why can't we see that? Why is it people who can't come to, I mean, you, when I first started preaching, I said, Lord, all I need to do is just show them what it says. Right. Right. And like Brother William said, people get mad at you for what it says. I didn't write it. You read that to me. You, Lord. <laughs> 
All I'm saying is that we have to be careful about questions. What if we ask God, does God really love me? I know you say you love me. That's what he's saying. Does God really love me? Because that's a question that people will ask all the time. You don't know what I've done. And you don't know what, where I've been. And you don't know the things I've Can God really love me? The Bible said in Romans 5, verse 16, where we were yet without strength yeah. in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah. People don't die for people they don't love. Yeah. People don't die for people, people, a lot of people don't die for people they do love. Yeah, that's true. But he said in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Right. Or for a venture for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love to us for that while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Amen. Oh yeah, God Amen. loves you. Amen. He sent his only God <laughs> son. He loves you. And if that's a sincere question, God wants to answer it. And Genesis 6 verse 5, And the Lord saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent and thought of the heart was only evil continued. How can you love somebody like that? Every thought and intent of the heart was evil. How do you love a person like that? But you know what God did? Build the ark so those people could be saved. Even though we go through these things and we're not perfect, Lord knows we're not perfect. God loves us. It says that the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth. And it was, he was grieved. Can you imagine you sorry that you he's sorry that he made us? That's some bad folk right yes, there. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you know what? He still saw fit to save us. He created, uh, uh, sent them into Egypt. And when they went into Egypt, he kept them alive. And, and they started worshiping phony gods down there. He still saw fit to save them. We, we go through these ups and downs. And Lord knows we do things and say things we shouldn't do and think. And say sometimes he still saw fit to save us. Yes, yes, and you want to know? Does God really love you? Come on. Of course he does. Yeah, Brother Whitney, and Isaiah. Isaiah 1 and verse 3. Isaiah 1 and 3. What does he say there, Brother? Hey. The ox Lord did yeah. on uh -huh. uh -huh. and the ass his master's creek. Uh -huh. But Israel does not know. Don't you think that he would you wouldn't want to? You wouldn't want a people like that that don't even know the master. Even the ox and the donkey know. Who, who, who buttered their bread? You know who put the bread on your table this morning? You know who put the, who put the water in your cup? Every, and then we'll play like, we don't know God? Yes, sir. What else, brother? But Israel does not know. Uh -huh. My people does not consider. Mm -hmm. Ah, sinful nation. Mm -hmm. A people laid with a nigga. Mm -hmm. A seed of evil do. Children that are corrupt. That's what it's like. They are forsaken. They have forsaken the Lord. Amen. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to right. anger. They are gone away back. They, they gone away back. They backslide. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you that if God can love a people like that, God can love you. Amen. And God has shown his love all down through the years. And brother with in Hosea. Hosea 1-2. God asked Hosea to go marry a woman that was a prostitute. Amen. And it was Amen. to show that God loved Israel who went out and did things against him out there in the same way. And Hosea 1 verse 2, what does he say there, brother? The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. Uh -huh. The Lord God said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of Horton. Mm -hmm. And children of Horton, mm -hmm. for the land has committed great horror and departed from the Lord. God said, I want you to go marry a, 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 a prostitute, yeah. and your children are not going to be your children. They're going to be somebody else's children. And can you imagine Hosea say, wait, wait a minute, God, you want me to do what? Uh, what's wrong? And it is an example of how Israel treated God. The reason that God wanted Hosea to do it for the children of Israel to understand that's the way you did me. Right. Yet God still loved him. You cheat on us one time, maybe twice, but that's it. You're not getting up. And God put up with it over and over and over again. Right. 
And this is what he told her, Hosea, Hosea 3, 1. And the Lord said to me, go again and love the woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the children of Israel. Yes. Though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. So I brought her for 15 shepherds. She was for sale on the auction block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had gone out and done stuff wrong. God said, go back and give her. That's what God did for us. God, we are the prodigal. We're the prodigal who went away and done things in the far country that we don't even want to talk about. Things that we think are so far under the closet that nobody knows about. And God says, come home. He's like the father that with his arms open and said, come home and, and put a robe on his back and a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. God wants us all to come. That's how much God loves us. Amen. Somebody said, well, does God love me? Yes, he loves you. That's why I say, for well, God so loved the world. He was only me, God. Whoso should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, that's why he told his son to go build a church in Matthew 16, 18. And I said to thee, upon that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I shall build my church. Well, I just want to know one thing. What did Job find out about asking all these questions for God? And this is what he said in Job 40 in, in verse 3. And Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. I, what shall I say to thee? I will put my hand right, over my mouth. Oh, I, I, I got to learn to keep my mouth shut, dog. Amen. Amen. You got too many things going in, in life to answer my problems only. There are other people's problems. Right. There are other things going in life. And I just want you to be concerned about me. And Joe said, I'm going to put my hand over my mouth. Keep my mouth shut. There's people today need to put their hand over their mouth. When they say you don't need to be baptized, put your hand over your mouth. When you say, let the Lord just come into your heart, you can't find that in the Bible, you need to put your hand over your mouth. Over your mouth. And when, when they say that you can have a church of your choice, whatever church you want, Christ only builds one. You right. need to put your hand over your, over your mouth. Right. And when they tell you that you can just say the sinner's prayer, please tell me where you find the sinner's prayer in here. Amen. You need to put your hand over your mouth. All right. Be careful when you ask God questions. You might get the answers. The Bible said there, where did sin and evil come from? It came from us. That's what it came from. And when you ask God, how long will that will the good suffer? Then you need to look in the mirror and say, Well, how long did you do wrong? Aren't you glad God gave you a chance? And when you said, Does God really love us? All you gotta do is look at that cross and see Jesus on that cross. And being put there by his own free will. Because nobody took his life. He laid down his life for you and for me. And then you'll be able to answer the question, does God really love you? All right. You say, well, preacher, I want to know what I need to do. You need to hear his word. And you need to believe what he says. Hebrews 11, 6. And you need to repent, Luke 13, 3. I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And you need to confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And what else you need to do? You need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. I don't get it. I just can't understand when I watch TV and they tell you to say this prayer and let God come into your heart and now you're saved and you can't even find that's in the Bible. No way. Amen. Jesus Christ said he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. And that adds you to the church that you can read about in the Bible. Amen. So I'm asking you today, when you ask God questions, he wants you to ask questions. Just make sure they're sincere. Because we got all these people going around today thinking they're smarter than God. Yes. And think they're going to get along with God and think they got questions that God can't possibly answer. Mm -hmm. But if God uh, if God loves a, a person and, 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 they do, and they do this and do that, you know, frivolous questions. Uh -huh. I can't even think of one right now. <laughs> what questions they ask? If, if, if God can make a 10,000 pound rock in a 10, what, what, what kind of stuff is that? Why are you wasting time with frivolous questions? You want God, and God has done so much for all of us to die and send his son. You need to come down this aisle today. That's right. You need to give me a hand to Christ. Because you know what you know what you know. And you know that this Bible is right. You know that there is nothing else in this world for us. Mm -hmm. 
Every time you think something's going to save us or it's going to be great, it never turns out great. You know, first time we had that walk, it was great. Mm -hmm. But after fifth or sixth time, it's just a walk. Mm -hmm. First time I drove my car, it, I loved it. But now it's just a car. Mm -hmm. You know, so everything in this life gets old. You know, it starts off great, it starts off new, but it always gets old. But God is always the same. He's the same yesterday, mm -hmm. and today, and forever. Mm -hmm. And I want to know do you love him with all your heart? Will you be willing? Have him to transform your life. The old man will look the same on the outside, but you'll be a new creature inside. You won't walk the same. You won't talk the same. You don't dress the same. You don't talk. You don't treat people the same. You don't use those four letter words anymore. You treat people with respect. The outside looks the same, but the inside is different. I want to know if you want to be a new man today. Who wants to be a new creation in Christ Jesus? Just come down and say, I'll give me a hand. Christ, but when you ask God questions, just be sincere. Amen. Because God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. And the people who do wrong is us. That's where evil came. Evil came from you. Evil came. It didn't come from God. All good and perfect gifts come from above. With, it, with God or light, where there's no shadows and shiftings and turnings. You ever have friends and one day they're this way and the next day they're just the nastiest person. One day they're so sweet, just a sweet disposition in the net. You're like, what happened? That's not the way God is. He's the same all the time. Yes. I'm telling you, you can be a new creature today. If you're a Christian, you're not living right, why not? Why not? Let's go back to our prayer closet. Let's go back in the closet and pray to God. Let's go back and start studying our Bible. Let's go and get God in our minds. And just ask, you know, by the time I get out of my bed and walk into the kitchen, I've already talked to God so much already. already. Thank Him for letting me get up. Thank Him for letting me get up, put my feet on the ground. And thank Him for the, for the blood is running through. Just thank, just thank Him. I know we want things from God, but stop asking so much and start just thanking Him for everything. I know we have the right to ask. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We say, Our Father. You know, nobody in the Old Testament did. Nobody in the Old Testament said, Our Father. You know, they would do, they, they considered God, but they didn't think he was their father. It's not till Jesus came and said, yeah. you pray like this. Yeah. You tell him you are, he's our father. Yeah. He's not our daddy. Yeah. He's our father. Right. Yeah. And I just want you to be a part of it. You come down this aisle, give me a hand, give Christ your heart. Let that be known. Let's get we stand and sing the song. Amen. Amen.